Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be trying more British food. I think, I'm not entirely sure what all is in this package, but we're gonna open it up for you and go through it together and we're going to talk about life and things. <laughs> Is that so? Big girl, girl. <laughs> Jackass. so before we open the box I want to give a big shout out to Rachel in London for sending this to us she also sent us the original package from the last video we did where we tried British snacks Rachel has been following this page for a while and we communicate on Instagram and at this point kind of feels like a a real friendship you know um almost a family member yeah and i would also like to give a huge shout out to all of my channel members you guys are amazing you have been so kind shown us all the love and support and we greatly appreciate you if you're interested in becoming a channel member now i have two tiers the all-star membership is a dollar 99 a month that gets you custom uh, badges by your name and custom emojis. I forgot what else. I'll have to go back and look. So I will put a little list right here. I also have a VIP membership for $4.99 a month that gets you all of the things of the all-star level plus priority reply to comments and we're going to start doing some VIP lives. I messed that all up, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, so Lee is with me today and I I'm going to take advantage of him. Is that okay with you? Yeah, just not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we got. Oh, there's a card. It says, hey Christy, this has suddenly doubled in size as I had to add a food layer. Had to. Now, I know you're not super into Christmas, but as you can't get to Europe right now, I thought it'd be fun to get my international friends to help me share some of it with you. So there is a combined Christmas break effort. Oh, so this is a combined Christmas break effort. Hope you also enjoy the mini, hope you also enjoy the mainly kinder layer. Probably you won't enjoy the, I don't know what that is. They're like something flavor, I have no idea. Okay, I think those are words that I don't know. Uh, I think that's what it is too. Christy doesn't care for hot tea, but I love it. Famous Teas breakfast blend. We will definitely be trying that. Absolutely. Oh, these are the kinder bars. Let's see. Oh, well, then I'm familiar with a breakfast blend. I find that really cool. I can already tell you. I, oh, yeah, cool. But I'm definitely going to need my glasses. These two pictures say Warsaw. Is Warsaw a place? Should be Poland. Unless Poland? It's a place in England. Oh. Yeah, Warsaw, Poland is a city. I wonder if she's got a place in Britain. Okay. I'll have to look that up later. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that's cool. She put pictures with each package. Oh, oh my goodness, wow. It's a Christmas ornament. Okay. Oh Ooh, I like this um, cup thing. Bunny's leaking again. Happy Hippo Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> she remembered. <laughs> I love the Happy oh, Hippo. Oh, your excitement, that was wonderful. <laughs> oh, wow. Can I open that one? Twiglets, oven baked, not fried. There's the happy uh, hippo. There's the happy girl with it. <laughs> oh, mm. man. Oh, I love those. What are those? Those are amazing. I'm not exactly sure what that is or what that flavor is, but that's good. They I'm not sure weird. you're gonna like it, but that's good. I almost hope you don't like those because I can finish them real easy. Those are good. Mmm. No. That work. I'll finish them. <laughs> you may have to finish those right here on camera. It tastes like a a charred stick. Mm, the char, I think, is what I like. Because I am such a barbecue fan, but no, those are good. <laughs> what? The sink for you. Rachel, these are good. Thank you. Mm. I feel special because I kind of feel like these two were more for me than they were you. <laughs> All right, so we can move this. The rest is 
Yeah, make sure you can, a lot of Kinder chocolate, which I know I like, so I'm not going to eat it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> so Robin wants to know, this is a question for both of us. Okay. But she said, I have a question for both of y'all. What is the funniest or awkward case you have ever been called out to? Mm. Are we taking foreign objects or sheer dumbassery? Mm. Funniest or awkward that you've been called out to? Which uh, there's a lot of funny and a lot of awkward, so I guess just pick one. Oh man. Um. <laughs> one that sticks out, I guess. One of the most awkward I can think of is, I'm not sure if I should talk about that on camera. Well, as long as you're not committing a HIPAA violation. Well, it was two females that were on, had both gone unresponsive, we assume, from too much fun. <laughs> and they were um, joined together by a mutual toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, like it was stuck. No, it's just how they were joined, and they were unresponsive opposite each other. And we actually had to pull them apart to <laughs> load them up and take them to the hospital. It was quite awkward, especially because they were younger females too. And yeah. did they ever wake up? Not with us, no. Was there drugs? They're involved? breathing, so we didn't do the arcade. Was there drugs involved? Of course. Do you mind? I would say quite a lot, <laughs> but look it, at this. <laughs> yeah, nothing that interfered with respiration. So there wasn't anything for us to do other than just take them in. But yeah, having to unhook <laughs> them—that was quite awkward, mm. especially when them being younger. Mm. You'd be surprised how deep down that rabbit hole that goes, and how many different directions it can take. So yeah, I was sitting there trying to think mm. of a. Um, Awkward or funny call, Ooh. and it's like pulling the handle on a slot machine. Yeah, I <laughs> think it depends on what kind of mood you're in too. But the only thing that's coming to my mind, this was I've told you about this before, but this was a thousand years ago. Um, but I had been running all day, back to back to back. I had not gotten out of the truck and was just exhausted and it was all a bunch of stupid stuff and uh, we finally backed into the station and I don't even remember who my partner was but we got out and we were walking up to the station and everybody was outside around the picnic table yeah. all the other trucks and I got, I was just like so over it and I walked up and I said if I get one more stupid call I'm quitting <laughs> and as if it was like pre-planned like, the tone really? yeah the tone drop and I got called to a 20 something year old male complaining of anal itching and the whole picnic table of people just like erupted laughing Ooh. and I almost just started crying. And uh, when I queued up to answer the radio, all the dis dispatcher could hear was the <laughs> the laughing. <laughs> but when I got there, I was just like, I mean, I probably should have been a little bit nicer, but <laughs> I was like, what would you like me to do for your anal itching? And I really don't even remember how that called. I think I'm pretty sure we PRT'd, but. I'm um, like she said, Beware of hippo. There's, there's thousands of these calls I could tell about, but if anyone in our area watches this, the odds that someone would know who I'm talking about are far too great. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've I've run a call before for nightmares. Somebody called 911 because they were having nightmares. Mm -hmm. Run that one. I've run like, and I think you probably. Well, I know you've run this one too, but this was also years ago, but went to a house. I think, I wanna say it was like chest pain or something. And this woman legit had tin foil over every surface in her house. Ooh, because exactly what you're talking because about. the government was, and then there was also an issue because 
I had to do an EKG on her because it was chest pain and the electrodes have metal attachments and I remember her I remember her freaking out mm -hmm. about the electrodes but I don't like that's all I remember I don't remember how it turned out or anything but and she fought her um She fought the things she couldn't see by having the entire house covered by multiple four foot UV lights <clears throat> throughout the entire house. So when you walk in, the whole house was like walking into a tanning bed. <laughs> and cardiac monitors don't like the UV light. You get a whole lot of interference, 60 hertz interference. And um, once we found the switch and turned them off, she bounced. I don't know if it happened with you, but when I turned them purple lights off, she went nuts. <laughs> now, I felt bad for her because... Yeah, that's a legit... Yeah, you know, legitimate issues. But I had to make changes to her environment to assess her. Mm -hmm. And the more I did to make what I was supposed to be easier to do or even possible, the worse she got. Oh, my. Nice. That was pitiful. I also got a question earlier today for you. <clears throat> Some people are wanting to know and they're just wanting to check on you and want to know how you're handling your mom's Alzheimer's diagnosis and um it's difficult um that particular deal is for me a lot like what happened to Christy mm -hmm. having been around it for the last 30 years there are times in your life when you would much rather be a mechanic or a shipping clerk than work in the medical field because you automatically know more about it than you want to. How do I feel about it? It sucks. Um, my mother's only 81. Having said that, um, she's here with me, with us. And I get to see her more than I did when she lived in her house in Lincoln, so. Um, I wish I didn't work 48 so I could spend more time with her, but you know, some things are just how life works and how am I doing with it? It sucks for me as much as it does anyone else. And here we are. <laughs> so. She told me yesterday, I forgot exactly what brought it up or I don't remember exactly how she worded it, but she basically told me and the hospice nurse that she did not have Alzheimer's. Well, and you know, it's good to me that she feels it. I'd rather she feel that way. So, well, and there's no need for everybody to point it out to her no. on a regular basis. Unless she gets lost or starts having a meltdown and say, hey, wait a minute. And I've noticed too, and you've noticed this because you've commented on it. Like she, so she, her personality, she's always been very, I don't want to call her a control freak, but like, like set in her ways. Mm. Things have to be in a certain, and that doesn't necessarily mean organized. It's just where she thinks it should be. Or, but like, for example, one of the things that she keeps flipping out about is phone chargers. She's got all of her charger she's got everything she needs right there and multiple times a day she cannot figure out how to charge the phone or so like the cognitive I think too it's harder I know like there's probably other you probably relate to this and like other people in healthcare but if I ever ran a call where like an elderly person died in their sleep that was such as hard as it was for the family, those calls to me were comforting because so often that's not the way we see people go. Mm. As medics, as nurses, doctors. Humans. You're seeing people at their worst when they're at their sickest. So we rarely got to see like what it looks like to age gracefully and be healthy and active and then go to sleep one night and don't wake up. We mm. only see people in their 50s having strokes and heart attacks and all of that. So 
I think for us, any diagnosis is scary because we've seen the worst of those things. We automatically think about the the horrible things we've seen. For someone to die in their sleep or doing something they want to do and die quickly without suffering, it's a blessing. And that's how I would have died. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> would have sucked for me, but yeah, that, it would have worked out for you. It really would. So, onward and upward. Yeah, those are weird. I like them. I mean, I re you're right. I mean, they have almost a charred flavor to them, and that might be what it I like. It tastes like you took a, you picked up a stick outside and put it over a campfire and ate um, it. <laughs> I'm not entirely going to argue with that. I'm really not. But <laughs> I swear. I guarantee you, I can sit around a campfire. So you and, can see that. <laughs> absolutely. You know, like, so I can sit around a campfire with a beard and just, and, well, these are good. What are you doing, Bailey? It's not preening time. Well, when is it not preening? I wish you guys could see now, instead of her having to chase him down and catch him and snatch him out of the air, now when he takes off flying, he goes looking for him. You better not bite me, uh, 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 Jackrabbit. But, um, Ow, he bit me hard now. Yeah, Step he's up. fixing to get me. Step up. Anyway, he'll fly through the house now, and when he flies up to Christy, instead of going over her head, He'll start flapping and bring it in and almost hover for her to just reach up and he'll almost land in her hands. <laughs> like, there she is. Here I am. So, we haven't talked about this in a while. And how do you feel or do you have the reser same reservations that I do <clears throat> about my neck when I have to have this surgery? Um, the way I choose. Because I'm look terrified. And that's understandable. And I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you I'm not, but I choose to look at it as it's part of the process. Um, you fared better than 99.8% of the people that have that problem. Now then, whatever you have to deal with going forward, that's part of the process, that's the price to pay for still not only still being here, but being functional. I know it's horrifying, I know it's painful, but look at the alternatives. And that's the way I choose to look at most everything in my life. It may suck, it will worry me to death, but you're here with me today and you're really not supposed to be. We'll take it as it comes. It's almost, it would be almost cruel though to go through everything we've been through. Life gets, you know, well, I mean, I know life is hard, but it's also good you and I, you know, our relationship, but it would almost be cruel after everything we've been through, we're on the other side, and then I have to have that surgery and... So you look at things differently than I do. We are at, we're starting... I can't be this sure. early long. We're starting our 17th month, 18th? No, yeah. Um, of time that we, weren't necessarily supposed to have, wouldn't have had. You say, wouldn't it be awful to go through all that and then it play out? That's 18 months I wasn't gonna get. Yeah. I'm good, yes, it would suck. No, I'm not necessarily good, but hey, I'll take 18 months over nothing any day, in any situation. Was there ever a point during all of that? Before you go to, think of the times we've had in the last 18 months. Mm -hmm. We have memories in the last 18 months that we didn't have prior to that they were worth the journey. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know one of the, <clears throat> the weird things about all of it is somehow it made our marriage better. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. And it was not bad. No, we had a great marriage. <laughs> like we were never in a bad place. We mm -hmm. had a great marriage and then somehow this made it even that much stronger, I think. Almost anyone appreciates things better when they almost lose them, as sad mm -hmm. as that is. But I've seen a big, and I've, I've told him this off camera before, but I've seen a big change in him. Any arguments we've ever had, I mean, if you think back on them, they've all been, like, it's just been a communication issue, trivial. right? Yes, It's trivial. been trivial, like, trivial I'm, I'm bad about, 
my tone won't match what I'm trying to say. And Lee, you've had a bad day. And I've had four hours of sleep in two days. And Lee and is just... real sensitive to tones. I'm real sensitive to voice levels. Mm. And but since the accident, somehow without any outside help, mm. the communication has been like just leaps and bounds better. Well. It's not only that, but having gone through what we've been through, when something like that comes up, it's easier to look at it and say, just how important is this? Yeah. You know, I didn't like it. That pissed me off, but how important is that? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go outside and chew on this tree for a minute. I'll be right back. And hey, let's have a glass of wine. Let's watch some TV. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like you've gotten better, but I feel like I've also gotten better too because I can think of several times where I've said, like, we're the same as, like, apologizing is hard for both of us. Neither one of us like to admit when we're wrong. I don't have a problem as long as you give me a minute to land. Once I land, I'm good. But, but <laughs> before, like, we could get in a little spat, and I would be mad for two, three days. Mm -hmm. But now... It's not worth it. No, it's not worth it at all. And now... It's a lot easier for me to say, whoa, okay, I was being an asshole and I'm sorry. Like, have I not done well, that? <laughs> and I have made it a point now. Not like you didn't know all along, but take for example, I, I'm home today, which is Sunday. I'll leave at 6.30 Monday morning going to work. I won't be home until a little after 8 a.m. Wednesday. For me to get four to eight hours sleep total in those two days is not unusual. Way, way, poor me. But I have learned that when I have those days to come in and within an hour or two after she gets up, say, hey, look, I haven't slept a lot. I don't feel like myself. I'm a little irritable. If I say something that bothers you, tell me. I'll go outside, walk around a minute, and I'll come back and apologize to you. So I, I've learned to start giving her a heads up, hey, I'm a little irritable today and I don't mean to be, so. Which all boils down to the communication is better on both, exactly. both of our. And I think that's the biggest difference is the communication. Mm -hmm. Because it's important that we don't waste mm -hmm. that day at home. I don't know why, I don't know why in the past it's always been so hard for me to admit fault or, you know, but like now it's, it's like, like, just be honest. Well, not only that, but <laughs> before the accident, a lot of times you were suffering the same things I was because you weren't doing the same job I was. Yeah. So you weren't sleeping either. And then if you came home and did your daily life and then had a bad night's sleep before I got home, then, hey, we're in the same boat. We got two people here that have any sleep. Mm -hmm. They probably be in the same room with <laughs> each other. But, hey, so that's just my opinion. I don't know how right or wrong it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, jackass. So I have a weird question. All right. <laughs> okay. So let me preface this question with, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but I think it's probably something other people would wonder about. Okay. So you and I had been together a long time, had a beautiful relationship, Ooh. you know, all the things. Then I had my accident where my body is totally different. My abilities are totally different. You saw a lot of things that a husband should not see. <laughs> and I'm referring to changing, knows what changing diapers and that kind of thing. How did you, and then now, you know, obviously we're not doing that anymore. And our trying to keep this family mm -hmm. friendly, but our, relations are phenomenal always have been so how are you able to because i've never been on the other end of that so i don't know um, you see what i'm i know exactly what you're asking and i don't know how to answer that without sounding like a cliche or that's one of those things where in my mind it's situational but at the same time you or anyone else I mean, it, it, it's hard to deal with. I ain't gonna lie. It's very hard to deal with, but... You're talking about what, what's hard to deal with? The 
what you what bothers you so bad that I went through helping change you and things like that, which wasn't real often. It, it just when you know, even in in the ICU, particularly with you and that halo and everything, that's one of those things that really was not a one person job. Mm -hmm. And they suffered from lack of staffing just like the rest of the world right now. So sometimes it was just necessary for me to help. Well, that was a necessary part of your life at the time. And to me, if you're not willing to handle that part of life, the part of life you're talking about is probably not as good as ours anyway because it's, it was our life, it was, it was what you needed at the time, and it was what had to be done. And you look at it as how can the time you're talking about be as good as it was if I went through that? And I choose to look at it because the time you're talking about it was something mm. that made that part easier. Because <laughs> you're, you're my person, and that's just, <laughs> that's the way it works. I don't mean to sound like a damn greeting card, but I'm serious. I just choose to look at it from a different side than you. I mean, I could be totally the same if I was, you know, if the roles were reversed. I don't know. I've just not been in that position. Well, so I, hope you're it's, not. I guess it's kind of like, I guess the closest thing I can equate that to is when a man watches his partner give birth. Mm -hmm. And, but that's not as, to me, that's not as extreme as what we went through no but at the same time it can be because that's often a part of childbirth but you're not having to have clean it up right but the part i mean just the fact that i was there i think is what bothers you you don't understand the help i was giving was really no different than what i'm doing with my mother i don't know any other way to help you find peace with that <laughs> and i it's not only obvious to me it's probably the people that watch these things can see that that's an issue for you mm -hmm. and I'm aware of that because I have no problem in putting myself in someone else's right, shoes. Right, that's what I was about to say. How would you feel? Oh, I'd be horrified. Yeah. I'd be mortified. Yeah. But that's exactly why I handled it the way I did with you and with her. I can help and be quite helpful and not see anything. Um, I hope one day you find peace with it. Now, to put myself in your shoes, I wouldn't feel a damn bit different than you do. <laughs> I, I would still be embarrassed. But yeah. Unfortunately, that's a part of life. And that's a part of life that I've got to come to terms with being older than you. <laughs> if anything else, I paid my debt. <laughs> when we get there and you're in that shape, like, hey baby, I'm sorry, but I did it before you did. <laughs> <laughs> Not to make light of it, but it is something that you, you have to find humor in it. Or it'll take you apart. Yeah. It's not I just had to ask because I think, I had to ask even though it's uncomfortable because I think a lot of other people go through that, mm -hmm. but it's something that's not really talked about. Mm -hmm. And there again, I'm no better than anyone else, but having been through it with strangers and trying to give them dignity and respect made it easier for me to look at it doing it with people that I love. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't know any better, you don't think about it, and you just go in there and you're just holding them and watching, which is a choice I found out. I can see where that'd get in the back of your head and cloud you up a little bit and cause you some problems. So how you treat those situations is not only for the good of the patient, but in the long run could be for your own good. Did I think about that at the time? No. Did I think about it with mom? A little bit, but my main goal with her was her dignity. Mm -hmm. I was doing something she absolutely does not want me to do. And as long as she and I maintain co eye contact, she knows that she still has her dignity or pride. Yeah. Unfortunately, you were bolted into one spot. You, you couldn't look well, at me while we were so doing like this. Most people who are in that situation, the vast majority are probably elderly where one is dying and the other one's caring for you know and so possibly even unaware of what's right going on. so like in our situation not only were we both aware but now i've gotten better mm -hmm. and so you've had to figure out how to get past that there again <laughs> it wasn't something for me to get past it was the task at hand that must be dealt with and it was yeah. that has nothing to do with our lives today because like I said, all the things you worry about that you're so mortified about, I didn't see. 
My job was to hold you on your side and talk to you and try to keep you from crying. Somebody else was behind you doing the things that you're worried about. I remember laying there facing you. I could feel my I could feel my body mm -hmm. shaking where I was just crying mm -hmm. so hard. <laughs> and I wasn't looking at anything but your eyes. So uh, say at him. Mm -hmm. It's a very legitimate question, and that's the best way. I've ever While you're here, there's two things that I just thought about that I would like to talk about together. And I, I think we should just go ahead and do it because I don't know when we'll have the chance to. You can add it in or take it away. Yeah, it so I have to fully take advantage of him when I have him <laughs> because we have so little time together. Yeah. Unfortunately, between his two jobs and now his mom. So the first thing we kept alluding to this and we never quite got there things surgery started happening and technical difficulties and whatnot but back earlier when we started doing youtube we were talking about icu delirium and how crazy i got and was just in a really bad way i was very depressed very anxious i was having significant psychological issues and <laughs> <laughs> and um we wanted to tell you guys what they did for me and us mm. and i think we should go ahead and do that now but most of the people who have been following your story have mm -hmm. seen did you ever put the pictures out there you, i know you put the interview with there, stacy we still have no. to talk to the other girls but no, the okay. only thing I've put out there, and if people dig around, they can find it, mm. is the article UAB did, mm. which I will link that article in the description and in the card right here so that you can click on it and read it. But there's picture, I think there's a picture in that article, but we never told the story. Well, there are several pictures. They may have only published one, but there are several. But we have not told the story ourselves for YouTube yet, so... Basically, and this is just a an example of love and your nurses and the people caring for you going above and beyond and not just taking care of me physically, but mentally. And let me stress that this was not my idea. I was present. My main contribution other than being there was taking the pictures. This is a story that only the nurses, particularly Stacy, should get credit for because Stacy, Haley, Connie, Lori. They did it. They participated. They made it all happen. But Stacy made Christy a promise that you get better, I'll do this. And that's what she did. Oh, so she did tell me that ahead of time? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't remember that. It was a reward. It wasn't oh. just to be doing it. It was a reward because you had come so far. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the reward was you spit that vent out get off the ventilator i'll take you outside i was still on the ventilator though no yes i was you had a trach. oh okay if i'm not mistaken it was just the trach. Now you I had to get a... off the vent so oh God, look at a picture. your reward for getting off the ventilator was a sunset and from the time she told you that until you actually got off of it was only like four or five days the part she has talked about um not only was she on a ventilator, but she was in a bad spot. No, um, I was still on a vent. No. Or O2. A, that's the O2 mask over your, that's a trach mask. Okay. You notice there's no big machine anywhere. Oh, okay. That's up to an O2 bottle. Well, I still had the. And that's your EVD, EVD drain yeah. and everything. So. It took these poor ladies an hour and a half minimum to get her in the chair, loaded up, all her equipment gathered up ready to travel this they didn't just put her in a chair take her up there let her see sun, sunshine sunset and bring her back there was over 90 minutes of prep between three different people was i awake during that because i don't remember any Every of that minute, yes. really you were very much they wouldn't have taken you if you weren't excuse me you had to be aware of being moved from the bed into a chair and it was only you had stood a couple of times, but that was the first time you had been in anything besides that mm. bed since the accident. You got in that chair that day, and they took you over to see that. Well, basically, I had been in, at that point in ICU for like a month or so, maybe longer. 
and closer to six or seven weeks. Because you were off the vent long before we left. Yeah, I had been in ICU for a long time, not really outside of that room, and was just in a really bad way. The only and, time you left that room was in your bed to go yeah. have a procedure. And was just in a really bad way, and they got together, and they spent an hour and a half packaging me. Let me add, the room she was in was quite nice. I mean, all of their neuro ICU beds are very nice. But the only view she had was the blank wall with the TV at the foot of her bed. And if you turned her sideways where she could actually see out the window that was to her right, her view was a brick wall of the wing next to her. So she could never see outside, so to speak, or see the skyline. So these ladies packed her up in a rolling chair and carried her up on the roof to the helipad. Another beautiful part of this story the very first time she went outside the hospital, she went out the same way she came in. She went out onto the helipad on the roof of the hospital. And we watched the sunset. And watched the sunset over Birmingham. And it was gorgeous. And all the pictures of me <laughs> are absolutely terrible mm. because I was ugly crying the whole time. And then Lori FaceTimed Natalie while we were up there. I talked mm -hmm. to Natalie. And we didn't spend too terribly long up there because it was cold. It was so funny. We'd been up there maybe 10 minutes. And she was crying and she kept looking at Stacy. And Stacy said, I said, Baby, what's the matter? I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but um, can we go inside? I'm freaking freezing. <laughs> so we loaded you up and carried you back inside. You're about to freeze to death. And they had you all covered up, but the wind yeah, was coming from behind it was, you. I remember being mm. very cold, and but when I look at the pictures, don't know. And this was December, by the way. No, no, no. This was in November. Ow. Mid to late November, yes. Um, but I, of course, I'm going to show all the pictures right here. But this picture right here, if you look really close, you can see. I think what's so special to me about these pictures is the look on Stacy's face when she's looking at me, you can look at that picture and the expression on her face is just so loving and nurturing mm -hmm. and I get choked up every time I see that picture. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about these pictures that I really notice, are you tearing up? Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful moment. Uh, Lee's over here, mm -hmm. his eyes are watering. But the other thing I really like about these pictures is when I look at our hands mm -hmm. because I am gripping Stacy's hand and it it's not something very obvious but I remember that I remember grabbing her hand and I fully implicitly trusted her mm -hmm. and she was my at that time she was my person other than you but mm -hmm. she was my she was the person that was going to get me through this and I trusted her implicitly and I feel like that shows in these pictures and, and that's why they're so special to another me. Another thing that shows in the picture that anyone outside the medical field doesn't recognize um, but if you zoom in on it and start looking at it she's not only in the halo she has the trach mask on with the big blue hose that leads to an oxygen tank about that tall and another one strapped to it up under it in case something happened with that one or it ran dry. And then she has the thing laying across her lap, the big plastic piece, which is actually measuring the fluid output from her brain. It is measuring the fluid pressure in her brain and her ventricles that had to go with her. The thing you don't see off camera is the big rolling cart that had to go with her everywhere I carried her up till then and after that in case she got it was like up. suction. It was a suction yeah. unit yeah, that had to go everywhere. We mm -hmm. had to take it to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. We started doing that and everything. We took it when we went to see Paul and mm -hmm. Alan, Paul and Alex. But um, there was... It was quite an ordeal. Yeah, we looked like a military convoy coming down the hall. Yeah. And that was just to get her on the roof for those 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, it was quite... And they did it proudly and with a smile on their face. I was... I was along for the ride to watch and take a few pictures. These ladies did all this on their own, and that's how they rewarded her for being strong and getting off the vent. At one point, once 
she was stabilized in her halo, had the EVD to prevent the pressure in her brain. The biggest hurdle she faced, the one that almost took her out, was pneumonia. And that's while she was on the vent. She, um, without using medical terms, she had lost lung function from here down, almost completely. Her lungs were like concrete, is the way we all dis discussed it. Solid whiteout. And prior to that day, like five days before that, there was a question whether or not she was going to make it through the week. And I was actually, I had people have that conversation with me three different times in that time period. And in that five days, you spit that trach out, and, or the, you jumped off a vent and up to the roof we went. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. Yeah. It'll always be a good day. Yeah, and word got passed around and the pictures got shown and uh uab contacted us wanted Correct me if i'm wrong but the lady from uab that did the story that got all that going she just ran up on the pictures right nobody no, presented no, it doctor, to her she no, ran up on it no dr godzik uh, we showed the pictures to dr godzik my neurosurgeon mm -hmm. And he wanted the pictures, so we sent them to him, and then he passed them along. And UAB contacted us to do an article on it, yeah, and they did a good job with it. And there's some quotes from Dr. Godzik in there. And anyways, I'll have that linked again. But we have been wanting to tell that story for a long time. I just wanted it to be at the right time, and I. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about that we have not talked about yet which there's still a lot we haven't talked about but another special thing was the day I came home mm -hmm. um, that's a pretty cool video itself yeah so and I don't know if you believe me at the time I had no idea so I you know if if you're not new here then you know that I was also a paramedic and the day I came home, I got an escort from local law enforcement and EMS, Sheriff's Department, Chief of Police. Police Department. Yeah. They met us at the county line and led her all the way home, which was about seven miles. Yeah, and that was really special because, well, number one, it's, it's just a nice gesture, but also the thought did not escape me that most escorts like that are in a funeral. I've been in many funeral processions in an ambulance. He's done it in a fire truck too many times, but I was very Celebration much- Celebration procession. Yeah, I was rare. very much aware that I was actually present and alive for for my escort and, and that was special and just a really nice, gesture a way to come home it made me feel like i was not completely forgotten about and her family met us here they were already at the house so they got to hear all of this coming Look through this town <laughs> coming through town and see the support that she had from the community so that was kind of neat for them to get to see because like she said most people don't see that they they see the respect of your co-workers and the people you know when you usually don't. Her and her family got to see it together. That yeah. was pretty cool. Thank you for letting me take advantage mm -hmm. of you. Can I do it again later? Absolutely. <laughs> I love you. I love you too, baby. So in my last video, I said that my next video was gonna be this new series I was working on, which I did sit down yesterday to start and I pulled up all of the pictures and could not form words. So it was just a lot of video of me just staring into an abyss because I could not. I, we'll adjust that, it. You can't do that I'm with sorry. microphones. Okay. Well, I'm sorry we didn't get that done, but we will we'll hit that next time. Yeah, me and Lee may have to do that together because I just, I, why can't I talk about it? It's not because it's emotional. Oh, most of it, you don't know the backstory. Right, you. right. I mean, you were you were there. You weren't aware of it, but you were there. Yeah. The amount of sedation and medications you were on, it makes sense that you don't remember any of these pictures. 
there was um, a time where I was on, I don't remember this at all, but there was a time that I was on ketamine for a while and I was convinced there was a big fat stripper in my room. I, I don't remember any of this. This has been told to me mostly by my sister, but she said that I was convinced there was a big fat stripper in my room and I did not like her and I wanted her out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that has been mentioned a time or two that's actually quite funny, um, she was bad to get aggravated writing on that board with her off hand, by the way. Um, she's left-handed, her left arm was paralyzed, so everything she did was right-handed. And when she'd get mad at me, she'd shake that marker at me. Well, she was doing that one day, and I choose to believe she was really mad and doing it too hard, but it slipped out of her hand, and it come at me. <laughs> I had a black dot right there for two days. Don't let anybody tell you dry erase markers will come right off because they will not. I had a black dot right there for two days. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please drop a fire truck emoji in the mm -hmm. comments to let us know that you made it to the end. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the week slash weekend and we will see you soon. Okay, we recorded for <laughs> Those things are really weird. They um they taste almost burnt. Mm -hmm. But I'm tell you what, as good as I think they are if I was to open a bag of them with a glass of bourbon, I'd be in the bed here in about an hour. Those things would rock with a glass of bourbon. I mean, big bourbon. Forrest drank it. Forrest drank it, I told you. What are your thoughts on Bailey here? <laughs> He's attacks me when I get out of here. Having said that, I wish I had took a picture. She came strolling into the kitchen a while ago out of the bathroom. Solid black. I think you just pooped on me. Solid black, looking there, like a crown. Yep. Oh, that's just nasty, baby. Um, here you go. Oh, that's just I like it. Rude. Forrest drank it, I told you. Dirty vermin. Forrest drank it. An hour and 16 minutes. Oh shit, that wasn't recorded. Bullshit. <laughs> We're done.